Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with something a little bit different. It's actually an update to some of our geometry nodes, and these are huge updates to a lot of them. So make sure you actually check out what we've done new with the geometry nodes. Now, of course, those of you that actually have purchased the geometry nodes already will actually get the update absolutely free, and that's for life. So anytime we do update any of these nodes, you will actually get the update. So there's never been a better time to actually grab these geometry nodes because they're updated all the time. And I'm just gonna go through the list of what we've actually updated. We've updated the vine node, we've updated the stairs node, the ivy node, the meadow node, which you can see here, and the roof tile node. So stay tuned to find out exactly what we've done. And what we're gonna do is first of all, jump in to the meadow geometry node, So those of you that follow the channel will know that we created an amazing geometry node for meadows. And what we've actually done now is we're able now to actually draw on to basically any surface, the actual meadow. What's more, we're also able to use weight painting in the med with the meadow as well. So let me actually show you that. So first of all, let me actually show you this. So if I come to this uh, meadow part, and I come in and I draw on this sphere, you can see now we're able to actually draw on our actual meadow. So let me show you how that works and then we'll jump on over to the actual weight painting one. So what I'm first of all gonna do is bring in a plane. So I'm gonna bring in a plane like so. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna reset all the transforms like so. And what's more, I'm also going to just give it this material. So I'm gonna grab this plane here. I'm gonna press Control L. I'm gonna link materials like so, just so we can actually see what we're doing. All right, next of all then, we just need to bring in now a curve. So Shift A, bring in any curve, it doesn't really matter. There's our curve. And now all I'm gonna do is press Tab, and I'm going to grab all of my curve with A, and then I'm just going to delete vertices. From now then, I'm able to come on over to the left-hand side. You will see that you've got a draw tool. If I go on over the top now, I should be able to draw on my curve like so, and nothing happens. But now the best part is we can actually come over to the right-hand side and actually give this curve the meadow geometry node. So add in geometry node, you'll click the down arrow, and the curve meadow is here. And then lastly, all we need to do is just which is the target object. So the target object is going to be the plane, and hey presto, there is your actual meadow curve. Now the best uh, thing about this as well is we've actually enabled a spread, so you're able to pull it out on a whim like so. And of course you're also able to have all of the actual uh, things you could do before with the meadow node, now with the actual curve. So if you want to, for instance, scale up the flowers, you can do that if you want to have you know, more in the viewport. So if I put this on a thousand, we can certainly increase that. Let's put this on a thousand as well, like so. Let's increase our scale of our grass as well. And there we go. And you can see it's got exactly the same functionality apart from now you're able to use curves. So now let's head on over and show you the actual weight painting in Meadows, which I think is a fantastic addition to this node. So what I'm gonna do now to show this is, I'm just simply gonna grab this plane here. So I'm gonna press Shift D, I'm gonna bring it over like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press Tab and I'm going to actually come on over, let's put it on the Move tool and let's give this some subdivision. So right click, subdivide, right click, subdivide, right click, subdivide, and then let's turn this up a few as well. And the reason I'm doing that, of course, is because when you come to actual weight painting, you will need subdivisions to actually work with. Generally, when you're doing weight painting as well, you will want to sculpt it a little bit and things like that, which means that you're going to need a little bit more topology. Now, that's all you need to do, really. Now, all you want to do is you want to come on over to the right-hand side where this actual uh, data point is, so data properties, and inside the vertex group, let's just make a new vertex. Let's call it weight paint, just something easy, like so. And then all we're going to do now is go on over to the left-hand side where it says object mode. You're gonna click the little down arrow, and on there, you're gonna see one that says weight paint. As soon as you click in there then, let's put our weight up to 100. We don't need to touch anything else, and now all we need to do is just draw this on, like so. Now let's go back over to object mode. And what I'm going to do is add in my geometry node. So the meadow geometry nodes, let's click the little down arrow, come down to meadow, and you will notice it fills it up straight away. Don't worry about that. What we wanna do now is just come on over where this little button is here, click this, and then click in the box here and come down to where it says weight paint. That is the vertex group that you've actually set. 
and hey presto, there is your actual weight painting working. Now the good thing about this is that if I double tap A, you can see that if I come over now to weight paint, so weight paint mode, and I come in, I can actually draw these on in real time. And the other thing I can do, which is even better, I can actually turn the weight of this down and it won't actually be as thick as you can see. So you can really get some really, really nice details in the sides of your actual uh, terrains and your um, environments and things like that. You know, as it fades out towards the sides, you can really, really get this in now. So that is the Meadow Geometry Node update. Now this one is a quick update on the actual stairs. We are now able to hide the base. So we're able to hide the base if you want to, and you're also able to hide the stairs as well if you want to. Or you can show the base, for instance, and hide just the stairs, as well as hiding the handrail and the actual pole. So you can end up with something um, like this, for instance. So if we hide all of the base, just something like this, which makes it really, really easy then if you want to make it so that you've got a rope bridge or something like that. It gives you the ability to create those straight off the bat. So that's it for the update on the stairs. So here we are in the actual IV geometry node, and this has had a pretty big update actually. You're now able to add in many, many actual types of leaves. So you can see here we can actually put this under a collection. If you want the same types of leaves, just move it out of the collection. We're also able now to actually scale everything up. We're able to, able to change the scale randomization. And more importantly, we're able to change the scale fall off. So you can see as they come up, they get much thinner towards the end. We're also able as well to increase the density on the IV. And you can see pretty much this is at a complete overall of our IV geometry node. And you're still, of course, able to draw this on to buildings and things like that. It just has all of this other functionality, including as well with the stem. We've also updated the stem. So I hope you enjoy this actual update to this one because it was much, much needed. So here we are in the actual roof tile geometry node update. And as every one of you has been asking for, we've now updated it so that we can have them offset. So the tiles can now be offset and you will see down here that we can actually offset the uh, material. You can also change the material now as well to be material odd or material even. And it actually will look something like that if you want to. So let me now show you how that works. So if I come in to this, we're able now to change the offset of the actual tiles like so. And what's better, we've also made it so that you can add in a randomization on there as well. So you can see now, this is how it's going to look like. And this is exactly what people are asking for. So I hope you really enjoy this update on the roof tile. And I think it's actually a good addition to what it was. And I think now it's near enough a perfect geometry node. And finally, here is the actual jungle vines update. Now, before we had a bit of a problem in that when we move these jungle vines anywhere, it would actually upset the geometry node. So what we've done now is we've actually combined these now and we're able to move them around. So you can just grab the leaves, put them wherever they want. It's not actually going to interfere with your render or anything like that. The other great thing we've done actually is we've gone in there and we've also made it so now you can actually add in your own vine material. So if you come into here and you come down, you will see now material and we can now put this on vines or we can change this and put this on uh, vine bark or something like that. So really, really easy now to change that around. You've still got everything that was there before. It's just now we've changed it so the leaves can be made smaller or bigger or move somewhere else. The only thing is, if you reset the transformations, of course, it's going to change the leaves around here. So just make sure when you are, you know, selecting your leaves, just make sure that the orientation or any leaves that you add in the collection is always down here at the stem of the leaf, and then it will actually go along the geometry node properly. So that brings us to the end of the geometry nodes update, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed it. We are creating, um, hopefully by the end of the year, over a hundred actual geometry nodes and we will obviously keep updating them so just make sure if you want any updates or you want to see anything new drop us a message down below make sure to like and subscribe i'm going to play the patreon now so if you do want to get all of our courses 
all of our actual geometry nodes for free, then stay tuned and watch that. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Hey, everyone. Do you want to have access to hundreds of Blender products every single month? Then check out our brand new Patreon, which is probably the best in the industry, especially for beginners to Blender. Best of all, we now have four Patreon levels pretty much for any budget. Or if you just want to follow us over there for the latest news on 3D Tudor, then that's also fine. So let's now take a look at these ranks and stay till the end to find out what we really have to offer. So rank one is all about just supporting us at five euros per month. And this is just to say a big thanks for everything that we do here. Rank two at 10 euros per month comes with a free course every single month. And if you've seen the scenes that we've been creating here on YouTube, where you can get your hands on any of these for absolutely free and you will get your name featured at the end credits of all of our YouTube videos. Moving on and stepping it up to rank 3 at €19.50 per month you get pretty much the same as you did in rank 2 but this time we also give you two geometry nodes per month absolutely free. And moving on to the big one which is rank 4 the top tier that we have at €48.50 per month and you pretty much get the whole shebang. Two free courses per month any of our geometry nodes, any of our model packs, any of our YouTube themes, but best of all, you also get the complete asset manager file, complete with our entire library of compositors, materials, and assets and this will just keep growing so whatever your budget there's never been a better time to support us here at 3d tudor and i think we provide one of the best patrons in the industry so head on over check out our patreon follow us over there for the latest news and if you can we'd be very grateful for any support large or small